All right, so I got, I got a question recently about FTP tests and someone just got a Wahoo and stages didn't have to do an FTP test. So I thought I'd just go through the different types of FTP tests. Now, Trainer Road has some good stuff on this. So they were one of the first people who sort of pioneered the eight minute test. So originally, we'll go from the beginning. So originally, Andy Coggan, who's sort of a legend of power meters and sort of created a lot of uh, normalized power, etc. like a lot of uh, in, like aspects towards power, he developed basically the idea of an FTP. So your FTP is like what you could sustain for about an hour, um, more or less. So he said the best way of doing that was to do an hour time trial. But obviously doing an hour time trial is very hard to do in terms of like finding the road space, finding a climb that long. And also it's very hard mentally and not many people can actually push themselves for a whole hour. I mean, even a half an hour effort going full gas, a lot of people find very hard to really push themselves for that long, let alone an hour. So instead he decided that the 20 minute test and then would be better and then instead you take a percentage of that so you take the 95 percent of that so some people say this is a question here uh from my experience even taking 95 percent of a 20 minute average is probably higher than high you can hold for 60 minutes and i i think this is one thing that people can confuse that your ftp is like the best power you could ever hold in perfect condition under literally like you were just so motivated and everything so naturally your hour power will probably not be your ftp for most people, just because they won't be able to push themselves that hard. Um, but anyway, so instead, there's a new test, which Trainee Road are quite um, excited about. Well, they sort of pioneered a little bit, same with Sufferfest. And they are basically saying that instead of doing a 20-minute test, which is quite hard to do, especially just in terms of logistics, finding a 20-minute road, finding a 20-minute climb, you can do uh, an 8-minute test. So instead, what you do is you have, you do an 8-minute um, effort, and then you have 10 minutes rest and then you have another eight minutes um and so basically what that does and then you take 90 percent of that so the eight minute test is pretty useful um in term in for me especially because i have no 20 minute climbs but i can find an eight minute climb more or less so it then is quite useful for me to be doing the eight minute test because it means i can actually test my ftp otherwise i have to do it on the flat and I never get the same power as I do on the climbs. Like, I'm trying to balance them so my power on the flat is close to the power on the climbs, but I know I'll always get more power on the climbs for me because that's where I do most of my interval training. So, the, going back to the original question, what should you do? Well, I'd say, first off, I just do, like, probably a 20-minute test just because that gives you quite nice power and, like, it sort of teaches you how to pace. But maybe, like, after a while, just start doing some 8-minute tests. But it also depends what... Um, like in terms of what events you're doing. So if you're doing more uh, shorter events and like more VO2 max effort sort of t style of things, then obviously the VO2 max one is probably more useful because it will give you a slightly different result and you'll be able to see like, is your power, if your is your eight minute power like 300 watts the first time and then 250 the next time, or is it 300 watts the first time and 300 watts the second time? Um, and then I'd say the 20 minute test is obviously more important if you're doing longer, longer endurance rides, um, like longer races or just climbs, which are a lot longer, but training road now have a new F FTP test, which I think is probably going to be the future. And I think this is how most people will do their tests because it just makes a lot more sense. So what they basically said is that they discussed some ideas and said, um, like who has actually done any testing and no one does it because it's so hard. Like. To do a 20 minute test, full gas, you have to be really motivated. And for me, I have to like, well, find a place, a climb, if I really want to do a, like a solid 20 minute test. And it's just like, there's so many excuses to make. So then you, you never really know if you're getting better, getting slower, and your training just sort of doesn't really improve. So the advantage of the ramp test, and this is why I think it's good, is that you don't, you don't have to like pace it. The thing does it, you just sit on the trainer and just bang out the watts. It changes the watts if you have a smart trainer. And then that means that you you can just relax and just not think about pacing, not think about anything and just push and just keep pushing. And pacing is quite hard to do. And you really got to be like, you know, incredibly good to pace yourself like really well. I'm quite experienced. And also it's just not as stressful. Um, this is here. You're only really doing about two to three minutes when it's really hurting. Well, a 20 minute test, that's um, you can feel it for a couple of days after that for sure. Like you feel dreadful after it and it takes you a long time to recover. Uh, so yeah, I'd say that is probably the best way of doing it. If you're a beginner, definitely do the ramp test. Obviously it needs a bit more, you know, you need the trainer road or something that can control the resistance on your smart trainer. I think you can probably do it on an app or something. And then the other thing I guess you need to do 
is uh, have a smart trainer because I think you can do it on a normal trainer, but it's obviously a lot harder because you're trying to flick to the gear and find, hold the power. On a smart trainer, I think it's the, the easiest way of doing it. Uh, so yeah, those are my thoughts. If you're very beginner, I'd say do the ramp test if you have all the stuff. If not, do a 20 minute test and then maybe just depending on where you live and what sort of riding you do, do a difference between an 8 minute test the 20 minute test. The 20 minute test, you 95%, that is your FTP. The 8 minute test, you 8 minute effort, 10 minute rest, 8 minute effort, and then take 90% of the average of the 8 minutes. Okay, I hope you understand that. Cheers for watching. Um, and let me know in the comments below have you actually ever done the ramp test? Because I've never done it. I've only done the 8 minute test and the 20 minute test. So, anyway, cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.